Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to JR and the crew. Today we have none other than the legendary rapper T-Bone. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be exciting. So check it out. We'll be right back after this. And we're back. And we're back. And we're back. And we're back. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, he did the rapper. Yeah. The only reason why I hate having breaks is because this guy could talk, and then they start talking about things that they're not supposed to. We're supposed to wait until we're back. God, man. So, before we laugh, I said the, a lot of, you, uh, of the things that you have now is because of your passion, because you yeah. are a passionate guy. As people can see now or even hear just in your voice, yeah. you're passionate. You know, you're passionate about your music. And now, I mean, music with you has taken a different turn because mm -hmm. now you are doing some new things yeah. with t -Bone. I'll talk about it with you a little okay. bit because I'm talk amongst family it, yeah. here, yeah, so right. it's all and good. Yeah, you're amongst so family right now. Before you talk about it, let me just say this. The creativity that T-Bone has mm -hmm. and being his friend and him feeling and us talking, feeling like, man, what else am I going to do? Mm -hmm. While yeah. He's going to talk about it right now, but I think it's so creative how he did this because he reinvented himself. Yeah. Yes, and you have to because it, that's the point. That's longevity. I, that's how you get longevity. And that's what I'm getting out of this show right now is that age doesn't matter. If you have a dream and you're passionate right. about something, that's you it. make it happen. Who cares? Because I've had people in my life tell me, dude, you're, you're, you're too old now, man. Just go do this. Like, wait, just because you settle, bro, doesn't mean exactly. I have to settle. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? I don't have to settle my creativity. That's real, that's real talk. You know what I mean? I'm yep. going to keep pushing. And that's the good thing about you because, yeah, when you call me and Jimmy and you come around, you're so amped, you're so hyped. It's like, dang, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he kept talking about retirement, but I kept saying, wait, retirement? What? I, I, I hear this and that in the air. Retirement? You know, look, I'm going to go through, I'll go real quick through a little bio of all the, all the, um, what we're talking about, all the different phases. So it right. starts off, obviously, as a rapper. Mm -hmm. From a rapper, I, I never just stayed in that. I would do rock, I would do hip hop, I would do gospel, I would do soul, I would do English, Spanish, all this stuff. Right. So I started working. That's kind of how I started becoming even bigger because most rappers were just rapping. They're with their backpack. I got to be underground, dog, you know? <laughs> and I was like, man, I'm going to do songs with Kirk Franklin. I'm going to do songs with Newsboys, Audio right, Adrenaline, right. Toby Mac, Crystal Lewis, you know, all these different people. So I started spreading out, doing all that. So then that goes on. Israel Holton, all these different people. Then, you know, now 25 years later, uh, I was like, man, you know, the English, let, let's, that's the thing, man. I keep it 100, bro. It's like, okay, dude. I'm not the hot, hot rap dude no more. I'm an right. older guy. You know what I mean, I always say rap, like Jay-Z said, hip-hop is a young man's game. I mm -hmm. was like, I understand, dude. I'm not going to wear these tight, skinny jeans. I'm not. <laughs> it's just that's your thing now. The lingo's changed all that. So it's like, okay, cool. I had my part. But now, like Jimmy said, what do I do to reinvent myself? Right. So I was like, man, how do I keep going or do I just stop and, you know, <laughs> Find find a regular job, and I was like, okay, well, imagine I'm, seeing you at Walmart. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, you're a man. I'm T-Bone right now. Have a good day. <laughs> are, hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to Walmart. Like, hey, yeah, you know what we got? Because all the energy. <laughs> We've got the flipping and the coming and the moving and the coming and the moving and the Which one would you like? That's three ninety nine. That's seven ninety nine. We have a special over here. So it's all kinds of crap. Para mexicano, cubano, panameño, colombiano, argentino, chileno, nico, yo pues like. Yeah, I mean, so I went from all that stuff, oh and then God. I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm Latino, and there mm -hmm. was this, not, I wouldn't say reemergence, there was an emergence of Latin music that I was like, man, this music for a long time, I'm Latino. I mean, I, I listen to salsa, cumbia, bachata, all that stuff, but that was it. When it came to urban music, it was like, man, what they're trying to do, they always try to copy us, the U.S., right? right? right. So I was like, it's, you know, that's played. I never liked reggaeton because it was like the boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Which the beat's cool, but it was always the same, same beat. beat. Yes. Reggae was like, I was used to listening to reggae where it's created. This was the same, they call it Dembo. And yeah. it's literally the exact same sample, and they just changed the music. Where I was like, that's boring. So, as again, like maybe five years ago, I was like, man, music is, the Latin stuff is dope. It's changing. Mm -hmm. So then I started seeing how they were leading in the whole urban thing. And I was like, man, you know what? I'm Latino. Maybe I jump into that market. So the crazy mm -hmm. thing is I did this song with Israel Holton that blew up all over Latin America. We actually got a Grammy for it. It's called Te Amo, right? Okay, yeah. um, and so we did that song. And then I ended up, we, we went to Mexico. We did this huge conference, like 25, 30,000 people. And who shows up? The king of all gospel Latin music 
topic is Marcos Witt. Sweet. I mean, when I say wow. the king, I don't know. Do you know Marcos yes. Witt? Yeah. So everybody knows Marcos Witt. Most of people, whether you're in the church, out the church, the dude has, I mean, funny side stories. One day we were sitting at breakfast and he's like, oh, yeah. He goes, uh, oh, that's cool. United Airlines gave me a shout out. And I'm like, man, that's dope, bro. They got like, <laughs> I was like, in my mind, I'm like, they got like, you know, 2.3 million followers. And, and thinking that in my mind, he's like, yeah, it's all right. I have more followers than they do, though. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, hey, hey, but you know what? Lying. Not many people can say that. You know what I mean? But when you transfer to uh, Spanish, yeah, I'm gonna be honest too. I didn't know you could speak Spanish. I thought you were a white boy. That's crazy, man. No, no lie. So when they told so me you were well. doing, Janet you know, thought he was—he was, well. he was a, a white boy too. Yeah, yeah I, get, so I, I was like, when well, he told me, oh, he's doing he he Spanish. Voice. I'm like, why? Blue why eyes. is he even doing that? The crazy yeah, thing is, mo- he's like, why? He has the colored eyes. Yeah, yeah. That was what I was gonna say. That's why because look at our skin. I'm darker than you are. See yeah. what I'm saying? So the thing is, though, is because of my light eyes, that's what kind of makes... And then I have a European nose. Oh, man, you draw me yeah. in. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, but my fans knew I was Latino because obviously I would always rhyme in Spanish right, right, as yeah. well and people knew my story. But the thing was, I was like, okay, I'm going to go into Latin America. So again, we do that show. Michael Switch shows up and he's like, hey, T-Bone, man, what you did in this song, amazing. My fans, they're all... My, my kids are all big fans of yours. They want to meet you. So they, he came and brought him up. He goes, man, we ought to do something together. And I'm like, man, it would be an honor, you know? Right, right. So next thing you know, here's got open in these doors now me and him are doing two songs on his record which won a mm-hmm. grammy by the way nice. you know and so so then he kind of catapults me into latin america but the crazy thing Marcos Switt is such a gracious guy he's like man i i not only want to just you know do songs i want to help you with your career so he takes me on tour with him okay i've done huge shows I, i've actually performed in front of one million people wow. one of the plaques that wow. i have is in 1997 it was on the steps of the white house it was a, an event called washington for jesus is where Christians from all over the world came. It was literally a million people. Wow. So that's my highlight. But other than that, I've done, you know, 20,000, 30,000. That's kind of 40,000 would be like the bigger ones, you know, and then the average shows were 1,500 to 5,000, you know. Yeah. But when I went with Marcos Witt, <laughs> it was a whole yeah. nother, it was every night we're seeing like, 70,000, 50,000, 100,000 three times. And the thing was, this wasn't, when we did Washington for Jesus, that million people, it was like 60 groups. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So when they go to see a hundred thousand this is marcos witt featuring t-bone that's yeah. it <laughs> yeah. they're there to see him so it was amazing so then i was like okay but now that i'm doing spanish though again because i'm creative and i'm an innovator and i have a pioneer's mentality i'm like i don't want to copy the sound everyone's doing so mm-hmm. what can i do that's different i want to do salsa bachata cumbia reggaeton dale, funk hip-hop dale. you know all these different things <laughs> and yeah. do it mix bachata with like some electronic and do it a little bit different so i did that it blew up jr you were you and jimmy were the ones that helped me mm-hmm. shoot my first video for the very first latin single Hola, i ever hey. did did which was Vola Vola which right now I don't know if you know this I think it's at like 18 million it views is. dude I get a cut of that right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but think million. about that. It, is that what it's saying? Yeah. So, so million. it's amazing. And so That's this nice. whole thing took off in Latin America. And to bring it all the way back around, I've been doing that for five years. But, man, I'll be honest with you. I just kind of have got burnt out. I mean, after thir- literally, th- I mean, wh- people that have followed me on Instagram, like if you followed me last year, people were like, dude, you're in a different country every single day. You're going here. You're there. there. I've been doing this for 30 years. And it's put a toll on your body even. Right? It has, yeah. you've told us that. You, you, you put an ice pack. Too. On my vocals. Vocal, mm, yeah, knees. like my, my voice is really always sore. You don't just stand there and rap. No, exactly. This dude I stay is dive, like, I hang from the lights, I jump <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and he's not lying. Yeah. yeah, Like, he's not lying. I, and I, that's at 21 years of age right now. I mean, I'm, you know, can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> but real quick, we're going to take another quick break because I want to get into the present now. Yeah, I wanna, the future of what where is T-Bone's brand going? I want to get into that. We're going to talk about my walker coming up right after this. <laughs> Back. <laughs> now that we've heard all the wonderful things that you've done and where you're go, where where you've traveled, all that fun stuff. I want to know what's going on today, because someone tells me you've been holding on to a wee <laughs> and you've got all this long yeah, stuff me, going me, on. Me and him are doing backyards. <laughs> That's right. So me and Jimmy, we started a new company. It's JNTGardening.com. You guys can reach us there for all your backyard needs. That's JNT. I'm just playing. You can find man. us at Home Depot. Yeah. yeah. Or you can find us on the corner of your local Home Depot. <laughs> 
<laughs> but what's crazy, they ain't lying. <laughs> you really do do no, backyards. No, so the crazy thing is this. Look, we went through kind of like my whole thing before the last segment ended. I was talking right. about, you know, how, how this has taken a toll. I'm a very energetic dude. Obviously, I got to be moving. I always got to be doing something. Mm -hmm. My mind's very creative. But we at the same time, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it's crazy because, you know, I've always, man, I could never picture myself. This is all I've done since I was 17 years old was get on planes and travel the world and do mm -hmm. concerts and wow. what a blessed life. You know it what I mean? Is, yeah. But and I honestly never thought I, I thought I was going to be and I always prayed, man, Lord, don't let me be one of those artists that's like you have to leave because no one wants to hear your music. You mm -hmm. know, I've seen people go through that thing. It's it's yeah. ugly. It's sad. It's depressing. I've gone through little phases of my little depression where it's like I wasn't hit and I was down for six months. And it's like, what you know, there's a worry. What am I going to do? Am I ever going to come back? But but for that's, me, that's crazy because that's your livelihood. Yeah, literally. That's a mean depression. Exactly. It's crazy because then and then you're like, you know, you have a fear of, man, I've been doing all this. What happens if, you know, I'm like you're you not said, relevant anymore. Yeah. Not only not am I relevant, but let's say I do go get a job at Walmart. Let's say somebody falls out and they were a big star there at Walmart. What happens? The the humility to, to be able mm. for a JR to walk and be like, hey, man, aren't you so and so? I had your records. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm working here at Walmart now. <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah, a really that's, tough that's, thing that's to mean, do. Yeah, so definitely. I thank God that I'm I'm leaving on my terms. Mm -hmm. Um and when I say I'm leaving it's because I'm kind of like like I said I'm in that last phase of my career mm -hmm. and, and I no longer which is crazy to me it had to be a god thing like I don't really have a joy to get on a plane and travel no more. As much as I've done it, it's like, you know, and I've yeah, been flying that's, that's, it don't matter crazy. do I tell people we're on first class all the time. First class don't matter. Sitting on a plane is sitting on a plane. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be on all the time. You land, it's like, hey, how you doing? Oh, now we're going to this radio show, now this TV show, now sound check. Now we got to do a meet and greet, now the concert. Then you got to wake up the next day, mm -hmm. do it again. I love that life for so long, and there's still a part of me that still loves a little bit, but I really don't want that no more, you know? So I was like, man, what am I going to do? I, you know, this COVID thing is crazy because I'm going <laughs> to tell you something. Two months before COVID hit, and this is insane for me, I was turning down shows. I literally was home for two months straight before COVID hit. So then I had some shows that were coming up, only a few because I was only taking very minimal shows. COVID hit, and I, all of a sudden I find myself at home four and a half months straight now. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling people, people were mm -hmm. at home, you know, for COVID, locked in for two months, but literally I was locked in for two months before that because I was trying to prove to myself I don't even need to be out running the streets. Mm -hmm. Like I can literally be home. Let me see if I can really do this. And this whole time, four and a half months, has been graceful for me. It's been fine. I did my own, literally did my own backyard <laughs> with one of my homies. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I was like, you know what? This is something that's fun and I can do. Maybe I start doing this for other people <laughs> yeah. in my community. You inspired you know? me to do my yeah, backyard. So I, inspired Jimmy, right. I even heard you got bids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your neighbors, did, yeah. Your neighbors. Yeah, so we're going to actually do some of my name. Now, I'm not going to go into a gardening business. <laughs> I haven't gone that low. But, but, but it's something that's fun. It's something you can make good money at. But at the same time, here's the thing. And as you know, we've all seen artists that don't set themselves up for the future. Right. Okay? T-Bone's not that One guy. One thing I've always told people, I, I share this with Jimmy, a lot of people don't prepare for the end because everything comes to an end. Exactly. It, or has to come right. to an end. And people don't prepare for That's it. real. And you know what? My whole life, the way I've always, the lens that I've looked at life through, mm -hmm. I've never worked for today. Even when I did music, when I did whatever I'm doing, I always look towards the future. I'm like, this is dope. I'm shooting this video today, but mm -hmm. I'm already thinking about what's next because especially in music, you're as big as your next hit. Right. So you have to have that mentality. It's like, you can't live on the success of this moment, this hit. If you do, it's like then tomorrow, when, three months down exactly. the road, you're done. Exactly. So for me, it's like, I lived the life where I did do that because when you're a young kid from the hood, you've never had nothing. Guess what? I'm getting $60,000 royalty checks in one day, like for a gig I did. And then I was getting, I was making 15 grand a night. I would go out three nights. That's 45 grand in a weekend, bro. I mean, I was making crazy money, but you know what? As fast as it was coming, I was spending it mm -hmm. because I always tell people you have to learn how to be a millionaire. Right. You know, that's if right. you don't know how to handle money, if I give a kid right now that's had nothing, here's a million dollars. He's gonna go, go out, spend money, take all his Buy friends. A car, yeah, yeah, anything. everything, yeah. Gone. Drive the Lamborghini. I did all that stuff. I would go take all my friends out there. I would have, you know, three hundred. $1,500 pairs of shoes on my on my feet, you know what I mean? I would be buying clothes, I'd be doing, just spending, living crazy, and guess what? 
everything one day came to an end and I was like I have nothing mm. and this was in like mm. 2000 2000 and so I was like man you know because to me a hundred dollars was like whoa a hundred dollars you right, know when right. you have nothing so a hundred thousand was like dude this is gonna last forever yeah. but you don't realize it's not that much money and you also don't right. realize when you spend it grows down you need to learn how to make your money grow Absolutely. so when I lost everything it was tough and not not only that I do got to say this and I know we're on a time thing but I got to tell this story we're good <laughs> so so tax tax evasion for me wasn't something I did purposely but here's the thing this is why I'm so passionate also about helping young entrepreneurs and young successful kids this is why they have such a problem because when you come into money you don't have the people to help you deal with money how to right. put your money how That's to invest your money mm -hmm. right so what happened with me JR you've worked a regular job right mm -hmm. when you go to a job what do they do you're like oh man they pulled you know eight hundred dollars out for taxes yeah, tax, right yeah, yeah. so i would sit with all my friends but here i am a 17 18 year old kid making all this money and i'd be like man dude your job sucks <laughs> nobody pulls taxes out of my check oh, wow. but it's because i didn't know i had to pay it myself yeah. like you have to when you're self employed 15 20 percent exactly put it away for the taxes yeah so i was just like and i would think to <laughs> that in my bro yeah young dumb kid yeah. wow. i mean i never even graduated from high school you know what i mean i was like i was always a troublemaker and, all, and then i went into music and i ran with it so here i was and i'm like now i'm like seven Seven years into my success and I've never paid taxes ever wow. and I'm like oh man and now I'm kind of like learning I was <laughs> scared like uh, yeah yeah here, boy. and I was scared to ask the questions and they never came knocking but I was like they're gonna come at some point mm -hmm. so I called a friend and I was like man I feel so stupid and I feel scared dude I've never paid taxes he's like what T all this time so he's like man I'm gonna help you so he's like we gotta go back and go back three years because they can only audit you three, three years, years back which is something I learned <laughs> right, right? right I learned all these things so they can only go back three years yeah so we went back to it but that was a lot of money he was like, all right bro you're gonna have to pay like you know sixty thousand dollars I'm like what he's like T he goes this is the IRA they'll come and throw your furniture on the you know you won't be able to get in your house and your furniture will be for sale on the lawn there's no so I'm like, wow. write the check, right? So we do that. We take it. I'm like, man, that hurts so bad, but I'm done. Well, he goes, there's a huge chance because you've never done that. You could get audited. So, bro, <laughs> next thing we know, then the IRS comes That's knocking. Knock. He's like, bro, there was a red flag. We did what we could, but you're getting audited. So then we go to court and all that, and I got to come out like 120000 out my pocket. Wow. imagine yeah. that yeah. that's like what I literally I think I started crying because it was just like <laughs> overwhelming bro to lose that much money but I wow. did that and so that's that's what I'm saying is like I don't even know why I'm sharing this I was going into how to learn how to how to no, have your well, money yeah. your finances it's for yeah. me because yeah. I'm on the run right now right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no so so what ended up happening was you know I started learning through all these different things and then finally when I lost everything it was the greatest life lesson because it made me value money and it mm -hmm. made me say you have to take care of this right. so thank god that i had a second chance i came out with the first record that got nominated for a grammy in 2001 which was last street preacher and from then it all started going uphill but the thing was i got to a point where i didn't know how to handle i went from spending so much to them being cheap like super cheap because it's like man Amen. i don't want to lose you know i don't want to lose anything you know so then as you start doing that That's you know why jimmy says that he hasn't been paid in <laughs> no so then after that then you start learning okay how to handle money you start learning and I can spend here, I can spend there. And then you start loosening up, but still not being dumb. I'm very yeah. wise with my money. He so, makes that his friends pay for everything. Right? That's, that's, that's how you do it, man. The best <laughs> way is to have your friends. I've been there. Yeah. Jared, thanks for the breakfast. Your lunch or treat me out to today. Jimmy, I appreciate the gas you're putting in my car for bringing here. You know, I'm just kidding. No, so, so the thing was, you know, once all this stuff happens, what it, what it did was now I own seven houses, you know, and I realized okay. real estate, I have some businesses. There's multiple streams of income is what the best thing is to have. Right, right. So, now I've set grown. myself right at a place where I don't have to sit here and grind, have to sit here and right. work so hard. But at the same time, you know, it's like, okay, well, what's in the next phase? I don't right. want to do this forever, you know? And so I started real quick. I started a record label. I have distribution through Sony. It's called Boneyard Records. Now mm -hmm. it's about putting out new T-Bones, putting out the next artist, the new generation. Duplicate yourself. Yes, which took a lot mm -hmm. of, a lot of, uh, when you're in the middle of it, it's like I say, like Kobe Bryant in the middle of his season, he's out trying to kill everybody. That's how I was in the, when I was in the industry, I wasn't trying to help 
help you help them because you're like, no, bro, I, I'm trying to be on top. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? You're, you're so to, exactly, yeah. you're you're scared of somebody else coming and taking right, your place. No, exactly. But as you get older, you have kids, and now it's like, man, you don't want your kids, you, and especially you have a daughter that's in cause now. You don't want your kid as she was growing up. You're not giving her what you had. You're trying to give her better. Mm -hmm. You don't want her to have the same clunk or no car at 17, 18. You're like, no, I want to give you a better car. I right. want you to be, you know, better minded. I want you to go beyond what you've gone. Exactly. And so that's now the mentality, like with these. First of all, having the security in myself. Secondly, saying, hey man, I want to help the next generation, and I sincerely want to see you go beyond what I've done. Right. And it's about catapulting that next generation to do better. So I started Boneyard Records through Sony. We're doing that. A lot of great things. But what I recently have started is a brand new show, kind of like what you guys are doing. It's called House Arrest because we were all locked up. That's and so right. I was like, man, what's a cool name for a show? I have so many <laughs> friends. What can I do with my time? I was like, man, I'm going to start a little Instagram thing called House Arrest, you know? So we've done that and now it's grown. Matter of fact, on July 1st, we go live on Apple Music, Spotify, uh, iTunes, Deezer, Amazon, all those things, you nice. know, uh, nice. uh, Facebook. It? Tell everybody what day is it. Do well, we don't have a day. We pick different days. Oh, okay. it's, sometimes it's a Monday, sometimes it's a what's Friday, sometimes it's both. My Instagram is T Bone Official. That's T Bone Official with one F. T-Bone, T-B-O-N-E-O-F-I-C-I-A-L. Um, and so what we do with that is now, um, July 1st, we also go YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all, every single stream that's out there, over 150 streams. And, you know, I have this great team. It's only, it's four people, but it's a great team. I have Lecrae's DJ. You know, mm -hmm. he's coming on DJing for me. He's doing all these, you, the beginning of the show. We have guests. It's not a hip hop show. It's a show that has, you know, people from all different walks. Um, but it's a faith show where we talk about people on their journey. And, um, and man, I'm excited about it. it's something that i think is going to blow up because no, it is because you have you've had ogs lately yes so oh they're yeah talking about their stuff yeah that's you know i'm I mean? glad you talking. said that jr because the thing is and i want to say this real quick the reason i started the show where it all kind of came was because you guys know soup the canvas sfc yeah. Yeah. so man bro i started crying the other day when i was telling the Ch chris chicago who's a huge radio guy you know he was like man because i'm so passionate about this dude with soup the canvas who is a pioneer in the gospel hip-hop game he's amazing mc he was on Instagram Live. We all know him, you know, great mm -hmm. guy who pioneered. He's on Instagram Live. These guys don't even really have Instagrams or not. It's a different generation. <laughs> yeah, so old. he's like, yeah, he's like, hey, man, I'm going to do this live. We're going to do this DJ, then dope DJ playing dope music. And so I'm like, cool, man, I'm going to check it out. I was excited. I'm like, this is soup. So I click on there to his live and there's one person watching and it was me. <laughs> wow! I mean, wow. seriously, it, it blew me away, Jr. Because it was like, man, dude, here's this guy That's that funny. for gospel hip hop, bro, he is your Run DMC, he yeah. is your LL Cool J, he is your KRS. Inspired Martin. you, yeah. I was like, this guy's got nobody watching, and as I'm watching, there's like two people through. It wow. never went past four views, and I was like, man, this is crazy. And I was like. I need to tell their stories because these guys, the Andy Minios, the Lecrae, they're doing all this stuff now, but nobody knows who opened the door. Nobody knows nobody who knows their exactly. yeah, who their pioneers and, and are. And dude, they were doing shows in like 20 people. I mean, they were breaking exactly. ground. So, when it was yeah. not popular. Not popular so I started bringing on a couple of those shows. Yeah. So I started bringing on all the pioneers, you know, GG, PID, SFC, um, Stephen Wiley, the Godfather, who I'm, you know, you can check that out on my thing. He actually wrote and this is the pioneer. He is the first godfather, the first rapper ever in gospel hip hop. He wrote the song, Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way they dribble up and down the court. They're playing basketball. I'm like, school, wow, man. dude. This, that's one of the biggest <laughs> hip hop songs ever. Yeah. Wow. And he was down with the Sugar Hill Gang and Curtis Blow and all that. So it's like these that's amazing crazy. stories, man. So House Arrest, you guys can check it out. It's on my Instagram. It's about to be, like I said, July 1st. I don't know when this airs, but it's going to be everywhere. The show's called House Arrest. You can check no, me out. Team on Oficial. What happens in the yeah. can for a while? <laughs> <laughs> <This way. laughs> they got to get all the bigger artists on first. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. So, real quick, Timo, if you can say uh, an, uh, an encouragement to those out there that yeah. maybe, like we talked about, I mean, yeah, we're older guys, but we're yep. still doing it. We're still yep. putting in work. You know, despite our age, it doesn't matter. You know, because I mean? mm -hmm. we have a passion. We want to yep. reach people. We want we want to make an impact. So. What are your words of encouragement to those out there that maybe are getting into a hip hop, a band, uh, maybe it's not their, a different genre, but just what kind of inspirational words do you have for them? Three words, don't give up. You gotta keep pushing, you know, and the thing is this, it doesn't matter what people say, you gotta believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, 
then you already lost. Because if you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to have the drive to keep going. You have to know that what God has put in you is a talent that is only in you. We're all unique. Right. What you're doing, only you can do. What Jimmy's doing, he's doing. What she's like, we all have our own talent. So right. keep pushing, keep grinding, but also know that it's not easy. You know, people want. That's what I'm saying. Especially this generation, they want it easy. It's yeah. not easy, people. It's a grind. You got to work every day. Jr. I've seen you do video stuff. I see you doing this. You're like me. You're constantly going, but you're grinding all the time. Time. Yeah. And you're like, dude, I'm going to grind until one of these things hits. And it's like it's like you saying, well, I'm going to do this TV show and this this podcast thing, and I'm going to come in and do it, you know, once every three months. Bro, you got to be here every day. You got to right. be strategizing. You got a team. You got all this stuff. So, yeah, it's consistency, and it's, mm -hmm. and it's hard work. There's no way around it in any occupation, whether it's entertainment, whether it's scholastics, you know, college, whether it's yeah. occupation, whatever it is, you got to work hard. Nice, nice. And you know what? Look, where can they find you again? Woo. They can find me, uh, T-Bone Official, on Facebook, Instagram, everywhere else. Again, that's T-Bone Official with one F. And check him out on his new podcast, House Arrest, on yeah. Instagram. Right. It's going to be on all kinds of different platforms. But real quick, anybody got anything, anything to say? I just want to say thanks, bro, for coming out. No, nah, man, I, I, I want to say thank you guys for having me. And I want to say I'm proud of you guys. You know, this is amazing what you guys are doing here. And I think it's something that's great to bring on people and tell their story, especially in a time where there's so much hopelessness. You know, we need to give hope. There's so much stuff going on with all this racism and all this stuff. Right. And, and people are just at, at a time where they don't need to hear. That's the reason why I do the music I do. I don't like to talk about the problem. We all know what the problem is. I'd rather talk about the solution. Right. So I'm proud of you guys. Thank you guys for what you guys do. And guys, don't forget, we have the pool party back here after the show. We're going to be hanging out so stick around yeah. but nah man seriously i appreciate you guys god yeah, bless you, you guys and thank y'all man thank all right guys we'll see you guys Adios.